Okay, so this video is framing knowledge questions number three. This will give you the answers to it. And this one pertains to, these questions pertain to concrete. Um, like I said in the previous video, when I introduced the five questions that there is a chapter in the carpentry book that does footings and foundations and slabs, so it deals a little bit with concrete so you get familiar with it, okay? So, number one, what are the basic ingredients of concrete? Three main ingredients of concrete are water, cement, and aggregate. Okay. Um, aggregate is the the filler material. Okay. That's your rock or your grass, sand or whatever you're going to put in there. Um, in most cases. Okay. Cement, of course, is Portland cement and water. Um, The amounts of each one will depend on your mix. So, um, number two, why is steel used as reinforcing concrete? Well, there's a lot of reasons why steel is using concrete. Um, it's relatively cheap, it's strong, um, but the main thing that is used in concrete is because concrete and steel have the same coefficient of expansion. What does that mean? Well, everything expands and contracts. So it either shrinks or um, expands depending on the weather. So in the wintertime, things shrink because it sucks all the moisture out of them and it gets cold and everything shrinks. In the summertime, everything expands. So steel has the same coefficient of expansion as concrete. If it didn't, then if they moved at different paces, then the steel or whatever the other material was would break loose inside the concrete and it would break your concrete apart. Okay, so even though it's cheap and it's strong and all that other stuff, it, the main reason is that it has the same coefficient of expansion as the concrete does. Okay, so. This one has to do with expansion and oops, contraction. Track. So expansion, okay, same coefficient of expansion and contraction. Okay, number three, what is this thing called? Um, the name of it is a keyway okay and what it does is when you put your wall on here the wall pours down into here so when you have a, a force being pushed on when you backfill you're gonna have pressure against the wall it helps keep the wall in place it doesn't allow it to be pushed over okay um, so that's the main reason why you don't want your wall to shift over. So they put the keyway in there so it kind of locks it in there. Okay. So a keyway and it locks the wall in place. Number four, what is the name of the slab or footing if it's done all at once? That would be a monolithic TH slab. Okay, a monolithic slab. Mono meaning one, so it's poured all as one. Okay, some people will call it a uni slab. Uni slab. Uni again meaning one, so it's either monolithic slab or uni slab. Um, a lot of people will call it a slab on grade, um, but it's all poured as one. Okay, and number five, what is slump? Slump has to do with the flowability of your concrete, okay? Um, 
when you're building a house, or you're pouring footings and foundations and stuff, you generally want around maybe a five or a six on the slump. Um, and what that means is they'll take the, the concrete and they'll put it in a cone and turn it upside down and then they'll see how much it shrinks from the cone that it came out of. Okay, so it comes out of a cone and then they allow it to sit and then they'll measure it to see what, how much it's dropped. And that's called the slump. The smaller the number, the thicker your concrete is. So if you have a five, that means it's going to drop down five inches in the allotted time for that concrete. Okay, so a five, it's going to drop five inches. Okay, so if it gets too runny, then it just drops down into a puddle. You don't want that because you're going to lose all your strength in your concrete. But you don't want it too thick because then you have trouble working it and, um, you know, other issues. So the, this, the slump has to do with the flow ability of the concrete. Okay, so... The flow ability, the slump test the flow ability, and it's based on a number system. So it's like a one, one inch of slump, two, a five, that'd be five inches of slump, six inches, whatever. So the flow ability of the concrete is determined by the slump. Okay. So if you want to learn any more about this, I will ha I have some concrete videos out there and explain some of this stuff in better detail than I did today. But, um, yeah, um, I'll try to get them put into the, the links in the description down below. So, if you have any questions, put them in the comments, and I'll, I'll try to get answered.